I'm doing once again. Can you see my slides now? Can you tell me? No, sir. It is still not visible. Uh, sir, now it's visible. Yeah, it will be visible. Okay, so pin on my pin on my slides. We shall now start our class. Okay, so good morning, everyone. In the previous class, we have discussed about uh, Ascaris. Ascarisuan and under the, the family Ascaridi and in today's class we will be discussing the next the next genera that is Toxokara. Okay, when Toxokara comes the name, you should it should strike in your mind that uh, these are arrow headed one. Okay, what do I mean by that? I need to say that. Um, I mean to say that the anterior portion is, as I have discussed already, it is something like an arrowhead. Okay, that means there is cuticular expansion at the anterior portion. Number one. Point number two. The another characteristic is that you see, you see at the beginning of the class, of uh, course, I told you that these parasites they are um, means the the parasites. It is very important. When studying the parasites, it is very important to stick to the rules. That means, what are the general characteristics? Okay, the general characteristic here is that they are having one, two, and three lips. One, two, and three lips. And they devote the buccal cavity. But in the morphology, I told you that these are a large parasites. You see, in case of Ascarisum, the female goes up to 40, 45 centimeters. That is quite large. Here, the Toxopara, these are a bit smaller. They are around 18 centimeters in female and around 10 centimeters in male. Okay, so what are those parasites? One is Toxopara canis, another one is Toxopara cati. We will, in the subsequent slides, you will see what are the description of Toxopara cati. Okay, first of all, we will look into Toxopara canis. Toxocara canis means mm, the, the host will be canine, means dogs and foxes and, and all those, uh, coyote and what else, and all those uh, wild carnivores, I mean wild canine carnivores, and they mostly will be locating in the small intestine. Okay, then as I have said, their unique characteristic is that they are having uh, large cervical expansion, or in that in scientific term, we can say these are an LE, plural ELA, A L A, or singular. Okay, in both the sides, there is an expansion. Okay, then coming to their general characteristic of the egg, the egg is a thick, the egg is covered with a thick albuminous layer. Okay, so that means the if you see in Ascaris also that the parasite is having a thick serrated albuminous layer. I'm just going back to the Ascaris. Let's compare what. Yeah, but here in this case, in case of Ascaris, the the eggshell is rough well, right? But here in this in case in case of Toxocora, it is a bit smoother than it is finely pitted. Okay, so that is not the issue. The identification is will be based on the host, and number two is based on the based on the whether there is an embryonic mass here or not. Here in this case, there is an embryonic mass which is um, unsegmented that we know. Okay, so let's come to the life cycle. In the life cycle, just like an Ascaris, the adult parasites will lay. The adult parasite will lay numerous eggs with a thick albuminous layer, which is covering the unsegmented embryonic mass. That's what I told you in the previous slides. Number one. Number two, the egg developed in the environment. These are general characteristics of an ascarid, of course. The egg developed in the environment into uh, larval stage, 
larval stage one, larval stage two. Uh, I told you that in case of Oscaris, L2 is the infective stage. That means the egg which is contained within the egg shell. Okay, why it is which contained within the egg shell? Because the album, thick albuminous layer is covering the egg shell. That's why the parasite, thick larva or the larvae, they are unable or incapable to hatch except inside the host will be chitinase, where there will be uh, esterase, okay, where there will be enzymes for digestion of this albuminous layer. Then only they will be able to hatch. If not, in the environment, they are not able to hatch out. They are incapable to hatch out into the larva. The larva, of course, the larva will be contained within the egg cell. Okay. So subsequently, the infection will be occurred through ingestion of the egg containing L2, or sometimes, I told you that the parathenic cause, the L2 might be, or the eggs might, the egg might be in, ingested by the parathenic cause like rodents. And inside the rodent, it will hatch, but it will not differentiate or it will not transform itself into L3. Rather, they will remain as L2. Okay, so when the L2, the, I mean, inside the tissues, tissue of the rodents, L2 is insisted when the definitive host like dog or foxes or well canines, they ingest or they consume, they predate on it, uh, then the cycle is complete. Okay. <laughs> The life cycle now comes in a unique portion. The life cycle is depending on the age of an animal. Okay, patent infection occurs only when the dog is younger than three age. I mean three months old age only. What do I mean by that? Patent infection means there will be an adult parasites only in young pups which are below three months of age. Okay, that means the parasite, the the parasitic egg which contain fertile, I mean which contain the the infective stage that is L2, the parasitic egg which contain the infective stage L2 is ingested by a pup, okay, which are younger than three months of age. As I told you that in the previous class, there will be tracheal root of migration. The parasites, the, the larva will hatch out in the intestine. And comes to comes to liver to hepatoportal vein. Subsequently, uh, from the liver, they will come to the lungs, to pulmonary arteries, and ultimately they will be cuffed up, and in, they will be cuffed up in the bronchi, bronchioles, and subsequently they will be swallowed again, and to become a uh, mature. This is as the case of Ascaris also. But now comes an important point: is that in case of in case of adult dogs, the moment they enter on the blood vessels from the hepatoportal vein, instead of going to liver and lungs, they migrate to other tissue. They migrate to other tissue. Somatic mig This is what we call somatic migration. Okay. This somatic migration is very significant and very, very important, what we are going to see in the Next slide. Okay, now come. Let me make one point here. The difference between Ascaris and Toxocara is that in case of Ascaris, there is a patent infection. That means there is adulthood of the parasites, even in adult infection, as well as in case of uh, young animals. But here in this case, in case of Toxocara, the younger animals are only the one which is going to have a patent infection when the animal attain more than three months of age. In, rather than going through tracheal root of migration, they, of the, in, in their tissue, there is a somatic migration. That means migration astray away from the normal tracheal root. I hope I'm clear. Okay. So the significance of the somatic migration is that this larva or this larvae they are going to be important for transplacental infection that means when the the
pregnant animal uh, is infected with Toxoka canis and she will pass down her, the infection through her placenta and sometimes through her milk and colostrum known as trans mammary infection okay so on the 42nd day of in of the of the pregnancy the larva which are already in dormant stage which are sleeping inside the various tissues and organs they are reactivate and they have started to come down to placenta okay from 42nd day onwards and subsequently they have in fact they pop I means the fetus which are still in the womb in her uterus okay so i'm not going much detail as this is online class if not we could have gone quite deep and in details but anyway let's forget for now so, and subsequently the larva also might come to uh, mammary gland during um, during lactation period okay so what in during her uh, means through her milk the larva has escaped and they comes and infect the pups in the pup there will be pattern and infection okay so let's see what the, let's see the picture here so usually the adult uh, they, you will not find eggs in the adult animal except some cases like weakening of an immunity or sometimes uh, scientists are debating over here some scientists say that they do the weakening of an infection that the weakening of the immunity that the the the, the, the what should i say the hypobiotic larva or hypobiotic larvae or the encysted larvae in her tissue may reactivate but sometimes another scientist some other scientists claim that it is due to the feces of this pup which is leaked by the uh, adult her, her mother his or her mother and that is passed again in through her feces okay they, they are debating over it it is not clear how the adult how the adult animal is passing the um, the age of Toxokara. Okay, so that is not our topic. Here, in case of Toxokara canis infection in the life cycle, if you see, only the, uh, the, uh, the pup, the young pup, will be passing out the eggs. Okay, this is we have to redraw it for your convenience. Okay, they will be passing the eggs, and the egg inside the egg shell, there will be development of a larva. Uh, L2. So when the egg is ingested by the adult parasites, I mean, I mean adult animal, what will happen? In the, there will be, instead of tracheal route of migration, they will undergo somatic migration. On her 42nd day of pregnancy, the, the larva will migrate to the uterus and they will give infection to the pup. Or sometimes, the larva will be reactivated du during lactating period. That means there will be trans mammary infection. Okay, so what are the roots of an infection? One is when pup can eat. Number one is by ingestion of the eggs containing larva by pups. Number one. Number two, by tracheal root of amin tra trans placental infection. Number three is transmembrane infection. Number four is the larva which is encysted within the parathenic host if it is ingested by the animal or the, the or the adult animal then there are four roots of an infection. I hope it's clear. Okay so what are the pathogenesis? In pups there will be production of pneumonia, development of pneumonia. But how does the pneumonia develop? Pneumonia develop when the larva breaks out open in the alveoli, and what will happen? Uh, there will be inflammatory conditions. What type of inflammatory conditions? There will be eosinophilic infiltrations. There will be exudations, and and in the bronchi, in the alveoli, in the bronchioles, and uh, due to that condition, there will be development of pneumonia. 
Okay, so when the when the parasites have come down to the intestine, to the intestine there will be diarrhea, there will be unhealthy um, conditions. That means the animal looks dull, and there will be harsh body coat, and there will be emaciation, and there will be pot belly pop. Okay, this is very very evident. If you see a pop with a pot belly condition, that means large. Uh, uh, extended voluminous abdomen, one might suspect that it is a toxocariasis, toxocariosis infection. Okay. And there could be isnophilia, allergic conditions could be developed. And one of the public health importance and significance is visceral larval migrants in children. Okay. I'm just going back to the previous slide on the picture. Okay. So when the egg is ingested by children, now comes an important point. When the egg is ingested by children, then there could in him in human there could be a development of visceral larval migrants. Okay, so what what is visceral larval migrants? As we are not a natural host, we can get accidentally human being can get accidental infections. Okay, by consumption of uh, by consumption of the egg of Toxocarapcanis or toxocaraketai. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, mostly this occurs in in children below five, six, seven years of age, and with a history of dirt eating or some. They children tend to what should I say? They tend to pick up the uh, I mean all those the eatables which is on the ground on the floor. Okay, so on the ingestion of the eggs, the larvae of course hatch and they enter the periportal portal system. And subsequently, instead of going to tracheal route of migrations and uh, somatic migrations, of course, they, I mean, they instead of going to tracheal route of migration, they migrate somatic. They undergo somatic migrations and they deposit in the liver, they deposit in the lung, they deposit in the eye, heart, and brain. Inside these organs, the, the catastrophe is that they are causing granulomatous reactions. Okay, so the parasite here, I, I'm going a bit deeper here. Okay, there are two types of an antigen in case of parasites. One is somatic antigen or somatic protein, which are the body organ, the protein of, of, I mean, the structural proteins, which made up the structures of the parasite. Another one is excretory secretory protein which are vomit out by the parasites for their digestion for their migrations okay so the excretory secretory protein of a parasite cause or provoke the inflammatory conditions and subsequently there is development of granulomatous reactions granulomatous formations Okay, so one of the catastrophe I told you is that if the granulomatous reactions is formed, if granuloma is formed in the eye, you can see there could be blindness, there could be photophobia and all this. Sometimes there will be, if the granuloma, granuloma form in the liver, there could be hepatomegaly or splenomegaly or tubercle granuloma in the lungs, or if in if a person the brain it could be quite serious. Okay. So what are the preventions? Okay, you must know that the the from now on you must be very cautious about uh, the how to prevent yourself from uh, or your your siblings or your cousin or your nephew and this from getting an infection of from toxocaracanis by visceral larval migrants. Okay, so the thing is, what are the good source in, in cities and in, in, in suburban areas is that your doormat. At the beginning, when you, when you are entering in the house, you used to put doormat, right? So that doormat is very, very concentrated. It could act as a very concentrated source of the egg. We have gone out in the in, in, in our neighborhood, we have just gone gone to the street and through our shoe or through our sandals and chapels, we may the, the egg could stick. And the moment we are entering on the 
on, on our on someone's home or in our home, then we use to dust off our shoes, right? So that is very very good source of toxocaracalis A. Okay, so one must be very cautious about and very careful in cleaning the doormat. Okay, I feel that it is always good to clean with hot water, boiling water. Normal disinfectant like your normal uh, wrap of phenyl or this will not kill, I told you that. For, I told you the egg could grow in one person, formalin, no harm. Okay, so the only way to destroy the egg is by, um, by uh, boiling water, if possible, with hot soda soda water caustic soda okay or else um, or at least this could be we should do this at least once in a week okay why because the egg they are very very having a very very thick covering so they you will not be able to clean or kill or disinfect within by by using uh, normal disinfectant solution Okay, now comes the second host, I mean second parasite, that is Toxopara Ketai. Okay, Ketai means it is of cat, right? So naturally they will be locating in the small intestine as most of the ascarid, they locate in the small intestine. They are a bit smaller than hmm, Toxopara Kenis, but of course they are having an arrowhead like Toxopara Kenis. Okay, in the life cycle, everything oh, is similar except there is no transplacental infection, only there is transcholostral or transmammary infection. Okay, so when in kitten, if when the egg is ingested and there will be no pattern infections and by the adult cat and subsequent what will happen and there will be somatic migrations and from certain period of her pregnancy, the, the larvae will start to migrate towards the mammary gland and during her lactation, during that time, the, the larvae will be passed down to the mammary gland, to her offspring. Very, very simple one. There will be so much, this is the existed somatic larva. And also the parasite can be infected through predation. That means the larva which is insisted within the parathenic host. Okay, so another one is Toxopara vitulorum. This parasite was also, is also known as Neoascaris vitulorum, and the host here is cattle and buffalo. Mostly calf are the one which is uh, suffering, and they are located in the small intestine. The parasite is quite large. They are around one feet, but Ascaris will be the largest. They are around um, 40 to 45 centimeter. I told you that, but here the body of the parasite of Toxopara vitulorum does not taper much towards the extremity. And the cuticle is not as thick as the as other Ascarid, but they look translucent. They look translucent. They look very beautiful. I mean, say glistening, glowing translucent. You can see. Okay, here comes the life cycle. Here also the egg, which is mm, the ingestion of the egg by the mm, by the uh, calf does not produce directly to pattern infection. Okay, so let me give. Let me say it in like this. So when calf ingests the egg, it will not directly develop into adulthood. The parasites will not directly develop into adulthood. They will rather, instead of developing directly to adulthood, they would uh, they would undergo uh, somatic migration. So if that calf become a cow. Okay, if it is a female, subsequently from her, some larva which is insisted within her tissue, 
they will reactivate from eight months onwards. They will reactivate only eight months onwards and subsequently through placent transplacental infection and through trans mammary infection, she would pass down to her offspring. Then only the larva will get matured as patent infection. Okay, by oral ingestion of the egg, I mean to say that by oral ingestion of the egg of Toxocara vitularum does not give patent infection. Rather, the patent infection occurs in calf below six months of age only when it is it, the infection is passed down from her dam, from her dam or from her mother through transmembrane infections or transcholesterol infection. Is it clear? I'm just repeating here. The, it, the calf which is in, which is ingesting the egg of Toxophora bitularum does not produce patent infection. Rather, they produce somatic migration. Okay, so when this larva um, resides in the somatic tissue, the time when this calf become an adult cow, then only the larva will reactivate. Okay, during her pregnancy, the, the gestation period is around nine months, right? Of eight, from eight months onward, eight. Okay, so they would be to placenta to give rise to transplacental infection, or during the gestation, they the larva would migrate to mammary gland for trans mammary infection. Then only the larva which have par comes down to calf through trans mammary infection or through trans uh, placental infection would give rise only uh, they will give rise to patent infections okay what are the pathogenesis the pathogenesis the uh, uh, even 70 numbers of uh, worms are present in the intestine of calf, they could, you can find the clinical signs. And one of the distinct characteristic of toxocara infection is there will be diarrhea and steatoria. That means that means the diarrhea which is containing lipids, fats. Okay, and one of the very very easy, uh, unique way and very easy way to uh, to know and to diagnose toxocara vitulorum infection in calf is. The moment you are approaching the kettle set, there will be very, very offensive and bad smell. Okay, from this time you can say, yes, in that kettle set, there could be uh, Toxocara vitulorum infections. The, the, uh, okay, so there will be mud color fishes and there could be fatality in the calf also. So what are the treatments of all those? Like we have seen in the previous class, there will be piperazine, benzimidazole, and levamizole, and ivermectin. This will work well. Okay, so I would like to repeat here once again is that this is very, very unique. The, the offensive smell of the fishes in the kettle set is very, very unique. And if you ever approach to the, to, if you walk, Towards the kettle set, you can easily say that yes, there is toxopara vitulorum infections in your kettle, in your calf. Okay. So with that one, we have concluded our today's class. In the next class, we will talk about parascaris and oxyuris, which are the uh, ascarid of, uh, of equines. Okay. Thank you. If do you have any questions?